All right, we're going to take a look at using range functions in our Golang templates. So in this first example, we want to create a simple grocery list. So we've created our data type grocery list, which is just a slice of string. Now the variable we're going to be passing in, g, is just that slice of string, all the different items we need to pick up at the store. So if we go down to our handler function here, it's just running this execute template method, and we're of course passing in our writer, the name of our template, and of course our piece of data, which we have right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our template. Now we have a range function here, and then our pipeline, well that's just the root of our data we're passing in. That's just our slice of string right there. And so the range function is going to go ahead and range through every single item in our slice and it's just going to range from here to here and of course we only have one line but if we really wanted to you could actually have several different lines if you wanted to. Now when it gets to one of these this is just one of those items remember that we're ranging it's just one of those items in that slice so this is just simply a string so what it should do is create a list item for every single one of the items in our slice. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, there we go. So we got a list item for every single item in our slice. Now, you don't have to just range through a, you know, a slice of a simple data source. You could actually range through something with a struct, which is what we're going to do next. So let's go ahead and change directories. Oops. Now in this next example, we're just going to make a to-do list as well as a list of items that are already done. Okay, so with our to-do list, we created a struct called task and it's going to have the name of our task and it's going to have a bool for if it is done or not. And we're going to go ahead and pass all this in in a variable called to do. And notice it is capitalized. We're going to go ahead and export that. And it's simply a slice of task. So if we go down to, oh, let's go ahead and take a look at our data source. Our to do variable is just a slice of these structs. So we have a whole bunch of them. We have one give the dog a bath. And is this one done? True, all these others, if we go down the list, mow the lawn, pick up groceries, all these others are just false. So let's go ahead and go down to our execute template, I'm sorry, our, our handler function. And again, we're using the execute template method, we're passing a writer, giving it our template name, and of course, our to-do variable. So let's go ahead and take a look at the template, our template. And here we're going to create two different lists. So here we have a to-do list and we have a done list. So again, we're going to use the range function and we have, we're passing in our list and we're going to range through, you know, from here to here. So all of this code right here is going to be run for every item in that list. And we're using an if function and then we're checking to see if we're, if it's not equal. So this not equal function is going to take these two arguments and it's going to see if they are not equal. So if it is not done, so if this is false and it's not done, well then it's going to return a true here and it's going to go ahead and print the name. So all the things that we do not have finished should print in this list. Now if something is done, and it returns true there down in our other list. So again, we're going to be ranging through the same list again. But in this one, it's just checking to see if that field is true and if it 
is, then it'll print it down here. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, there we go. So everything where the field done was false, it went ahead and printed it in this list. And when the done field for each one of those structs was true, it printed it down in this list. So let's go back to main and let's go ahead and change, change our data that we're passing in. Let's say the the day has moved on and we've got a lot more things accomplished. So a lot of these have been finished and we have, I believe one item that is not, let's run that. Oh, there we go. And let's go over to our browser. And there you go. So the template will dynamically display things depending on you know, what data we pass in. So as the data changes, what gets displayed will go ahead and change along with it so that we don't have to hard code anything. But anyway, I hope that was insightful. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments and I will see you in the next one.